So I dropped my first video on this topic yesterday. I knew it was going to be bad. I did, actually didn't expect it to get that bad. It's been the most disliked video I've put out in a very long time. It has a horrible ratio. And I was even talking to the guy. I'm like, hey, just so you know, when we bring this information to light, because so many people are not going to want to hear it, they're literally going to take it out on us. Like, we are the ones that caused the problem. We wrote it into law. Is this something we even want to cover? I mean, it's already written into law, so until things start happening bad, nobody's going to believe us anyway because it's always been that, oh, they can't take away our guns because brr, 3D printing can't stop the signal. And I ultimately decided to because it could be combated if you know what the hell you're doing. So what was the point of that video? What? Where did I mess up? Because it was my fault. I should have did the video better, and I would have got so many dislikes, and I would have got the information out there better. Yes, my thumbnail and title were a little extreme, but I made that video, that thumbnail and title, to target a specific audience because this is the people that are going to get affected by it most. So the video was, number one, to alert you, there is a new agency in town, just like the ATF. No, you will not be going to federal court anymore talking about copyright. So there will be no, um, look at this case, this is how they ruled in this case, so therefore my case should follow precedence, that would not be copyright. No, this new agency is like the ATF. They're there to enforce the rules. They're not a federal court anymore. Yes, if it gets really dirty, you can move it to federal court, just like how in gun control, if we really want to fight it, we can move it up to a federal court system. But for the most part, everything is going to be left to this agency to handle. So it's going to be done by their discretion. We all know how the ATF turned out. They've changed their mind and flip-flop opinion from day to day. You never really know what the hell is going on. And you're fighting against people that make up their own rules. So they can therefore make up rules to change how the outcome of a case comes as the case is going through. Oh, uh, where are we here? Oh, the claim itself. It does not have to be legal. It could be a bullshit copyright claim or a bullshit uh, theft of intellectual property claim. The thing is, is there's nothing, no, no penalty for making a claim that turns out to be false. And where it really hurts us is they took making a copyright claim before. It was something like, I think... A, don't quote me on this. I think it was like $1,000. You went to a federal court. You said, hey, that's my material. They stole my material. I show up in person. We go through a court proceeding, and I argue whether or not it was fair use. And then a judge decides, okay, that was or was not fair use, or that was stolen material. Now, it's something like $50, and you don't even have to be there. So somebody can just file claims remotely. For cheap enough where they could do it on a mass scale. The next thing I didn't really talk about. I was talking about like them stopping the printing themselves. But I did not cover this side. Okay, so what if I got a VPN? Then they cannot stop the printers. VPN equals safe. Now, I don't know a whole lot about interneting. So I don't understand how to retrieve material. So I don't even fully know what a VPN is. But that's not the point. If this was a 3D printed receiver right here, and somebody had did a claim, hey, uh, I put out a file for f 3D printing receiver. Now, in my example, I had used Colt. Uh, I shouldn't have used an example at all because then everybody thought that because I was talking about Colt, I was talking about Colt because, you know, the original AR-15, which actually Armorlight had owned the patent on it, so therefore I mean that Colt is going to try to claim that all receivers are... A copyright or intellectual property and that, that that wasn't the point I was trying to make the point I was trying to make I just used Colt because everyone hates Colt and I thought I could have used that example without getting too much flack because if I would have said something like Daniel Defense there would have been a whole line of argument with people going oh Daniel Defense would never do that forget about the company itself so company A which I had used Colt for an example puts out a claim hey I had had a file for of receiver blueprints, a 3D printed receiver blueprints, and my computer was hacked and that file was stolen. So I am putting out an intellectual property claim 
against any 3D printed receiver. Doesn't matter the shape, I came up with the idea, therefore I put it out. If you'll notice, I did my blueprint in, we'll say, 2010. So now you're at the shooting range, you have a 3D printed receiver. Get a tap on the back. Hey son, so I got a notice through the police station to ha be on a lookout for these 3D printed receivers, which I have no idea what they look like. But anyway, there's a copyright claim out on 3D printed receivers. So now, you have 30 days to prove that you did not steal that file from company A, which we're gonna call Colt, 30 days. So now you have to get the information. If you can't prove the information, now you're gonna have to go into court. So now you have to prove in this not even legal court of law because it's not a federal court. It would be like trying to prove to the ATF something that, hey, I did, I did not steal this 3D printed file from company A. I came up with these blueprints on my own. Here's my blueprints. If you'll notice the dates on the blueprints, I printed this receiver way before this company A, which again, I'm saying Colt just because they do everything it seems like to stop people from going out on their own in order to keep it in the company from company A. Therefore, that is not a copyright claim. Oh what, I can't produce the files? So now I gotta keep going through this and I take time out of my day. The point is even if the claim is total bullshit, they've still drug you into court, costed you out of pocket, and there's no penalty to go back after that company to stop them from claiming against other people. So you got it, okay, I proved my 3D printed receiver was not copyrighted claim, but that doesn't stop all the other millions of people that show up at a range with a 3D printed receiver and get a tap on the shoulder and get served court papers to them because there's no penalty against them for just filing a just general vague copyright claim against 3D printed receivers. That's what I'm talking about here. It's not that 3D printing is necessarily dead, you guys need to learn how to fight this because you have, it's a small period of time, it's like 30 or 60 days to prove that your receiver, now it isn't directly against receivers, I'm just talking about the implications of what's going on here and how that could affect the 2A community because this is a 2A channel, so instead of you know just talking about everything else, like the MP3s on your radio or you know, what music is on your iPad or something like that. I'm just laser focusing at the ramifications for the 2A community, which would be 3, 3D printed material. So you gotta know your way around it ahead of time. This way, if you get hit with one of those, you know how to fight this. Move for a dismissal. Okay, here's my files. I did not steal intellectual property. It may be decided that 3D printed receivers altogether are contraband, or 3D printers that do not put an identifying mark on the 3D printed material, like date, something like that. You may have to put uh, the license number where you got your 3D printed information from. There's just so much, this is such a vague thing, and it's going to a new agency altogether. We need to adapt. That's ultimately what the live stream is going to be out of as well. And again, I'm bringing on somebody with a PhD that's going to explain this to us all. But what it's going to come down to is we need to adapt. We need to make 3D printed receivers look more like receivers. Eventually, when metal 3D printers get cheaper, it'll be easier. And you could go on and on about the Repair Act and stuff like that and how that also made that you couldn't get aftermarket parts, blah, blah, blah. We're not gonna dig into that because that's a long topic. We'll save that for a live stream and we're gonna have an hour long video. But adapting, I believe that is the answer. What we need to do is make the 3D printed receivers look more like this receiver right here. So at first inspection, it does not look like a 3D printed receiver. Now, yes, this is only two weeks old. We have no idea how they're gonna run with it, but looking at history anytime a government agency, a bureaucracy, has a chance to take a crack at us, they use that crack. They will most likely use this against us. And it will most likely happen in the form of 3D printed receivers because they're openly trying to get rid of home builds. They're also attacking 80% receivers. And this would be the other side of the coin 
how to get the ones that are just printed off because they can't stop it. You can just print off it. They can't stop what you're going to do at your home. So I believe ultimately they will try to make 3D printed receivers themselves contraband by using copyright claims in this new agency that has been formed. Will that happen? I don't know. This is only two weeks old. Again, I'm just the messenger here. I'm just trying to see, or just trying to show you what I have found. I can't, I don't have a crystal ball. I can't see into the future. I don't know which way it's gonna go. I'm just looking at which way do things typically go in history? What are the implications, how they could use this? This is the most likely avenue they're gonna go down. And I apologize. Please do not snap off in the comments. Again, this is only two weeks old, but the implications are there. Whether or not it will be used that way, I don't know. It might not be a bad idea to try to fight this thing or get it removed. Will we be able to? Highly unlikely. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you'd like to help support the channel, I got my Patreon right there. I also have affiliate links in the description down below. Just by clicking on those links, even though even if you don't buy what the link is for, add a little kickback for it because you came there off my channel. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.